Greetings, John Bowen here for the final assignment um, in the intermediate section of the homework. We're asked to modify this logistic map information content model to allow the user to set a threshold for the symbolic dynamics. Uh, in the current model, it's hard coded to 0.5. Uh, investigate whether changing the threshold changes the information content measured for various values of R. Okay, so let's look at the model. We are told that um, we are to change the threshold value. If we peek into the code, we can see um, we're told that it was set for 0.5, and certainly there it is, uh, hard-coded. I frequently find myself uh, changing hard-coded values to slider values to investigate models, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. So I'm going to make a slider called threshold. And we'll put that on the interface, right, like so. Boom. And we're going to set the values. This can run uh, from 1 uh, to, let's say, we set a low of 0.1. And we'll do increments of uh, 0.5 or 0.1. So there we have it. Uh, we've created a new um, slider that controls that threshold. So that was the easy part. Now we need to, to conduct some experiments. Um, of course, if we do it right as it is, uh, right now it's just exactly how it was formerly. Uh, but now we can change this. And uh, see. Now, it's, uh, often in these models, it's hard. Uh, you could have a notepad and you could copy down these values. But there's a, an easier way that's built right into NetLogo that allows you to run multiple experiments. And I want to introduce you to something called Behavior Space. It's in the tools. And if you look here, Behavior Space, you can create an experiment. And the way that, uh, that we, um, let's say, experiment with R, that will be what I call it, um, this shows you the sliders that are on your uh, model. Um, we had a slider for the initial value. Um, I always like to start out at 0.5, but uh, and the values for R. You can put in multiple values. Let's let's check uh, out R at uh, 3.0, 3.5, and 3.8. So we're going to look at those distinct values of R, and we're going to also try out different threshold values. We'll try out a threshold value of 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and um, 0.7, let's say. Or, uh, yeah, for symmetry, that's 2.8. Okay, so now what we've done is we've set up um, actually a set of nine experiments that will be run because each one of these uh, values of R will be tr tested at the different th at this threshold at 0.2 and at 0.5 and 0.8 and um, likewise we could we could run these uh, multiple times to get um, to see how accurate our results are but this is, since this is a um, deterministic system we don't need to, to do those things more than once. Um, in this case, we're not going to be counting turtles, but we're interested in the variable, the info content. And um, how I determined that is I peeked behind the scenes uh, of this plot right here, and, and that's the value that we're interested in. It's information content. This plot is driven by the global variable information info content which we can see in the global variables. Okay, so um, okay, so let's see here. We've got, we're measuring info content. We don't want to measure runs at every step, so I'm going to check that off. We do want to set up some time limits. Let's run this thing for, oh, let's say 15 steps, and then we'll um, take the uh, measure of info content. We can change these later, um, but that, that should be good. So. Let's see how this works. Uh, it says that there's going to be nine runs. That accords with what we saw with a mix of uh, 
threshold and R parameters, and we'll run this. It wants us to save it. We'll give it a name called um, Complexity uh, R versus Threshold descriptive name, make a new folder, call it test, it'll be on my desktop. Um, actually, let's do it on the desktop, new folder called test, create that. And um, <clears throat> now we're ready to, to run. So, boom, very quickly, go to the finder, Look on the desktop, find test, and there is our model. And we can see, um, I'll zoom in a little bit. We can see uh, that when R was three, the information content was zero at all three different threshold settings. Uh, when we moved the uh, we moved into the second bifurcation, that's at value 3.75. Then we started to see that the information content was zero if, the, if we used a low threshold setting, an intermediate value at 0.5, and one if we um, used a higher setting. And of course that makes sense because um, we're capturing those different bifurcations in different sets. So. Um, at a certain setting, we're going to uh, group those uh, into two different groups, essentially uh, like the word zero and one, and we'll uh, have a high information content. So this allows us to look at this model and check the sensitivity to different kinds of parameters that we set. And um, parameter sweeping is what they call this in um, aging-based modeling where you're very interested in, in um, how sensitive models are to different changes in parameters. And we can see this here with the information content. Now, there's a lot of experiments and a lot of exploration you could do with uh, different regions of R and different kinds of thresholds. Um, and I think it would be very interesting to, to look at um, different regions of the um, logistic map. Uh, I just want to sh point out one other thing here uh, that I don't know, I, I assume you uh, had a chance to play around with the logistic map bifurcation diagram, but this gives us a chance to see actual regions of um, the bifurcation diagram that are particularly of interest. And I, I'd be very interested in checking this region right here. but. Um, in this particular model, in order to find out um, what this R value is here, I have to do a little bit of simple math because I built this world so that it was 2,000 pixels wide uh, and the patches correspond to um, the value of um, R in this case. So if I wanted to know what the R value for right here was, I could inspect the patch and find that it's uh, patch 1923. So this the uh, X value of this patch is 1923. So I could do a little math on that. I could say, um, I can use the observer here as a little calculator. I can say, um, again, I'll try to make this big so you can see it. I can say, show, oh, what was that value again? Over here, it was uh, 1928. So show me um, <clears throat> uh, 1928 divided by the total number of pixels, 2,000, times 4. Because uh, my virtual range ranged from 0 to 4. And that should show me that we are at an R value of approximately um, 3.85. So we could go back to our um, other model and we could edit this run so that we were looking specifically at um, those values, 
a four. And, uh, and that might be very interesting to just look at a bunch of values right around there and see if we can find uh, the change or find a way to measure uh, that departure from randomness that we see visually in the bifurcation diagram. Because in the end, that's what the information content is. It's a way to measure how far you've departed from a random uh, situation. So hope that helps.